Now let's calculate what is our speed at apogee. We can get that from the uh, conservation of specific angular momentum, RPVP, that's the vol radius times the velocity at perigee, uh, <clears throat> equals the radius at apogee times the velocity at apogee. And this is called specific angular momentum because we divided out the mass. If we had mass on both sides, which would be the actual angular momentum, we would cancel that, and we have RPVP equals RA. VA. We can then solve for VA as RP over RA times VP. And for VP, we add the circular speed, the square root of mu over R1, to the delta V1 in equation 19 to get this equation for the velocity at perigee. Now we'll plug in some values to equation 26, setting RP equal R1 and substituting the equation 26 into equation 25 gives us VA is RP over RA, this ratio, which is R1 over R2 times, and the, the solution for VP is all the rest of this stuff, square root of mu over R1 times the square root term. We bring in the R1 over R2 inside the square root, so it will be R1 squared over R2 squared, and uh, canceling uh, this lower R1 once and this upper R2 once, we end up with R1 over R2. And then plugging in equations 16, 20, and 21, basically the numbers for the mu and the R2, and i uh, sorry, R1 and R2, and mu of the Earth, uh, we get for our solution the velocity at apogee is 1.595 kilometers per second. So if we perform the inclination change maneuver, at apogee, then from equation 8, which is essentially this equation where I've now put in VA, uh, plugging in 28.5 degrees and putting for the VA this number now, we get the following result. The delta V inc, that is the delta V that we need to change the inclination from 28.5 degrees to 0, is 2 times the velocity at apogee times sine of half of 28.5 degrees, and we get 0 0.785 kilometers per second. And that is much smaller than the 3.839 kilometers per second we had before when we looked at what would happen if we had to change the inclination uh, to zero from the circuit orbit we started in. So there's a, quite a big savings there. Now, after doing the inclination uh, zero out, we then want to circularize into the geostationary orbit using the second half of the Hohmann transfer. So the delta V2, or circularizing burn, is square root of mu over R2 times 1 minus the square root of 2R1 over R2 plus R1. And plugging in numbers, here's the mu of the Earth again. Um, <clears throat> and um, here's the radius 2, radius 1, and radius 2, and uh, the first term is the circular speed at a radius of R2, it's 3.075 kilometers per second, and multiplying by this uh, parenthetical term, we get 1.480 kilometers per second for delta V2. That circularizes, okay, that's our circularizing burn. And now the total cost, if we add equations 33 and 36, the delta V to zero out the inclination at apogee plus the delta V to circularize adds up to 2.265 kilometers per second. And we're now in geostationary orbit, in orbit of um, one sidereal day period and zero inclination.